Well, like everything in life, there's the pro and the con, the good and the bad of something. Nothing in life has all pros and no cons. So in this video, I figured I'd share with you the best and the worst parts of living in your car. Uh, because last night, uh, I had a, a bad night and I was a little bit frustrated. So I had to kind of do that old trick that they tell people to do when you are trying to decide on what to do next. Uh, get a piece of paper, they used to say, put a line in the middle, on one side put the pros, on the other side put the cons, and then if you have more pros than cons, go with that. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'll be doing as I share the best and the worst of car living, three years in a car. Uh, it'll be 100 degrees maybe today, and uh, we'll talk about that. But it, it's a live feed. I'm going live a little bit early. It's a Sunday, so I figured uh, I'd give a little treat to any of my members out there, anyone who wants to watch, and we'll break down, uh, instead of doing a morning video, just do a morning live, and then I'll decide if I uh, go live again later on, but, you know, when it comes to the best part about car living, the number one is the money, right, because the number one reason you really get into car living, for the most part, is you want to cut out your mortgage, you want to cut out your rent, okay, so that's the best part, um, the worst part is you still need a place to park, okay? You still need a, a legal and safe place to go. And that can get frustrating at times and it can wear you out because of all the movement and thus the unsustainable lifestyle of a full-time nomad catches up to you eventually if you don't constantly go through this exercise. Now, if it gets to a point in life where we lose our physical or mental capacity to be independent, it, it doesn't really matter to a certain extent what you do in life. Someone else got to take care of you, so your living circumstance will change. But the best part about, or one of the best parts about living uh, in your car is that you do have the ability to adapt quickly to change, and you can navigate around some of life's pitfalls or some of life's aggravation. Um, now, the coronavirus kind of really tested that theory on if every gym in the country closed, can you really still navigate around the system? Because in one sense, look, living in your car, and you can say van or RV, you're trying to navigate around the system. You're still legal. It's legal to live in your car. You have to find legal parking. But you're trying to be on the outskirts of the system so that you can control more of your life and that you can be less dependent on the system, on something else. You have more control of your destiny. And that's inspiring. That's empowering. I mean, last night, you know, the worst part of it is getting caught in extreme temperatures, uh, too hot, too cold. I've dealt with both. And and wanting to, to rest in climate control, wanting to have uh, some of the uh, comforts and conveniences that owning a home or a home base does provide. Um, now, those who have a fully self-contained RV, they el eliminate that worst part. Uh, as a car or van dweller or liver, you suffer through that part. The extreme temperatures are a, a big deal breaker for a lot of people. Why am I still holding on to that? Well, I haven't found, you got to be very careful when it comes to RVs, because when you go RV, you can be just as expensive as a house, especially once you consider the cost of the RV, the cost of the fuel, because whether you tow something or whether it's a motorhome, the fuel costs go up, um, the cost of the campgrounds, obviously an RV is going to make you go to campgrounds more often than not. And so if you calculate all those things, you could easily say, well, if I'm going to spend that amount of money, I'm probably better off if I know I like one particular area, I'm probably better off just buying a home base. Uh, it will appreciate in value. The RV will depreciate and you go through that whole spectrum. Now, when it comes to an RV or home base, the worst part about that is the maintenance and the liability. You know, the best part about living in a car is you avoid a lot of maintenance and a lot of liability. Like today's Sunday, I call it self-care Sunday. 
I woke up early, had my breakfast, and then I did laundry. I washed my sheets, I washed my clothes, and then I washed myself, right? I, I went, I had to go get a shower, I shaved, try to shave every couple of weeks. And so when I wake up, uh, I am free from the burdens of taking care of a uh, washer and dryer, cleaning the vent. Uh, I'm free from the burdens of electrical bill. But uh, the worst part of it is I don't have the conveniences, okay? So I'm not paying for things, but I don't have the conveniences of things. So just doing laundry is movement. You know, you may have to drive several miles, okay? Uh, same thing with showers, same thing with regular things that when people wake up in their house, which I did for 15 years, you wake up, you have your washer and dryer in your house or your apartment, you shave in the bathroom, you take a shower in the bathroom. So you pay a price for it through rent or through mortgage, through utility bills, but everything you have is right there. And so starting your day is very simple. Uh, starting your day living in your car is very much an adventure, a burden. And what I kind of worry about now, the worst part about living in a car is driving. I'm still very young and I enjoy driving, but it's a very dangerous thing. You know, driving will kill you more than the coronavirus. Uh, driving is, it's dangerous. Um, and the more you're on the road, the more obviously your odds are of an accident, of a mishap. So, you know, I think about that, but I still justify the best parts about living in my car is I sweat, it's 100 degrees, right? It's not even the noon yet on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, but I still rather have all my options. I look at my age. I, I, I will not lie to you that to live in a car van, you have to seriously look at your age. Now, I have some great viewers, member Gail. She's uh, close to 70, living in, in her SUV, and she eliminates some of that burden by renting sometimes. I also had another view, viewer, Sarah, from California. She was a nurse. A lot of nurses look at this lifestyle as a possibility because nurses have a lot of flexibility with their work schedule, four days on, four days off, something like that. You can, you can pretty much be a nurse from anywhere in the country. It's a very great field to be in, or even a caretaker. But You know, like I said, the coronavirus messed Sarah up. I think she needed to, you know, which I understand, you know, she needed to get into a, a stable environment. You know, stability versus flexibility. You know, those are the best and the worst parts about car living. And if you go, look, you know, there's something to be said that humans are creatures of habit. Humans thrive in a somewhat routine-based day, okay, with sprinkles of adventures and change. Most people don't do good with change. And so I think part of the mindset of a nomad, okay, is how have you dealt with change in your life? How have you dealt with change of your job? How have you dealt with change in relationships? And you have to really ask yourself, are you mentally there strong enough or do you have the wherewithal to deal with that much change? You know, for a couple months, no doubt. For a couple years, maybe. For several years, probably not. You know, it's the same premise of, you know, what I often share with people. They start a YouTube channel, they start living in their vehicle, and then they stop eventually. Because it's... It, it's... It wears on you, okay? But what I reflect on through my life experience is everything wears on you. So like last night when I had a bad night, I was thinking about a couple things. I was thinking about, well, one is, do I want to go to Florida? Because I really don't want to be in New Jersey. You say, Sam, you're living in your car. You could be anywhere. And so I lived in my car last summer in Florida. And I said, ah, I still see my life as harder right now there than better with the extreme temperature. Extreme temperature is the worst part. One of the worst parts about living in your car. Okay. Now I will say this, there was a couple years I owned a condo and that my air conditioning wasn't working. And I remember sleeping in a second floor condo without air conditioning and that sucked. So like when I make that list in my mind, like, is it better to get a house or, or, well, I said one is if I ever get a house, you guys are, well, I don't assume people know I, for me, the only home I would ever consider again is an RV lot. That's it. Or, or, or a small little shack. 
Why? Because the hardest part or the best part about car living is no maintenance. The worst part about having a house is maintenance. And I want an air conditioner that you can get from Lowe's, plug in and play. I don't want a rooftop AC. I don't want a condenser outside my house or apartment. Why? Because it's more maintenance. I've dealt with that. Several thousand dollars. You had to call a, a person that has a refrigeration license. It's a disaster. Even if you get an RV, make a mental note, don't get a rooftop AC. Why? You ain't going to change that yourself. You're going to have to go to an RV dealer. I try to eliminate the middle man or the middle woman in life. I, why? Because I like my independence. So when I draw that line in my mind and I take out like that imaginary sheet of paper, the best and the worst part, I think about, well, the best part to me is, is maximum independence, uh, maximum um, not relying on other people. I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't like sitting around waiting for other people to come to my house or to come or to fix something. I even hate getting my car maintenance and I have to deal with that. Um, so like everything in life, we try to figure out what's our next decision. Okay. And we try to start to weigh out the pros and the cons. I think age again, plays a big part for me. I say 40, I would like to tough it out till I find a home base so cheap that I could take that amount of risk. Infinity, brother, great to see you, man. Four ninety nine, blessed morning, brother. I appreciate you, man. Infinity, blessed morning to you, my friend, my longtime viewer, my fellow believer in a vasectomy. I love you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching, brother. Thank you for that gracious tip, man. Good morning to you. I just had my Starbucks, brother. I had a rough night last night. I feel a little bit better after uh, getting my laundry done today, shaving, and. Uh, and that's what I'm just sharing in this live feed is that, you know, like I'm sure you experience infinity in life and, and everyone It's like, you know, this is what I remind myself, no matter what walk of life you're in, you have good and bad moments of the day, good and bad moments of the week, et cetera, et cetera. So not to overreact, not to give into the urge to think that just acquiring something else will solve all my problems. It won't. Because if I acquire an RV or home base, it solves climate control, it, it solves convenience, but it adds maintenance, it adds liability, uh, and it adds some things in my life that I'm just not there yet. Tony, good morning, brother. How are you, Tony? Top of the morning to you. Great to see you, brother. Thank you again for being a member. Shout out to my man, Tony, and my longtime viewer, uh, Infinity. I call him Infinity, but it's... In, Incentive infinity, <laughs> 1999. Yeah, guys, we're here. Uh, it's going to be a very hot uh, next couple days uh, in New Jersey, at least. It'll be 100 degrees, just about with the heat index. And then we just about peak out up north. You pretty much peak out uh, with uh, temperatures usually the end of July and the beginning of August. And that's exactly where we're at. This is the height of summer with regards to the heat index and the heat in the northeast as we start to progress into the middle of august and then further then obviously the heat starts to dissipate and then climate becomes suitable for the camper uh the, the camping time of year the best time to live in your car is fall and spring why because those are the most moderate temperatures and that's why you have a lot of people in california living in their vehicles because they have a pretty much all year round moderate climate okay so uh uh, do I ever think about going to California? Not really. Uh, I see myself as an East Coast guy. I like the Atlantic Ocean. I like the currents and the energy. Um, but I don't know. You know, I guess, you know, look, obviously having my mom still alive plays a part in my decision making uh, to, you know, because look, I, I evaluated that when I, when I lived in my car. I said, well, look, if I'm not tied down to one thing, I know I won't always want to be by my mom because I like my independence. And I, I was struggling with that last night, too. I said, man, I don't feel like I have enough independence. You know, I, I've been up here too long, but I got caught. I got caught with the coronavirus coming up here earlier than I wanted to. Last year was great because last year, even though it was tough for about a month or so in the summer in Florida, I didn't get back up to New Jersey to see my mom for my yearly visit until like the end of August. And that was great. I spent a month, two months with her, and then I shot back down. It was good. This year, 
because everything got crazy with the coronavirus in March. I came up here in March and it really screwed me up. But I really had to discipline myself last night and say, Sam, look, what are your objectives of life? Well, to live up below my means, to have financial independence, okay? To not stress about maintenance and liability, to focus more of my energy and my time on self-care and creativity. And then after those things, then, then comes comfort, conveniences, and stability, okay? That's the priority level in my life. Now, again, as a 40-year-old man with no kids, no pets, I think, you know, those are things like, you know, you really have to ask yourself, you know, your age and your circumstance, like everything in life. But if you ask me, would I, would I live in my car again? No doubt. Uh, if you ask me, would I have bought one of the three home bases that I almost did? I thought about that last night. I kind of regretted it a little bit, you know. But it's tough, you know. I, I'm gun shy on commitment of purchasing something, whether it's a home or an RV, because... I don't want to get caught in the algorithm I got caught when I had a house for 15 years where it was a never-ending process. I think I'm wiser. I think I'm wiser today than I was at 22 uh, when I bought my first house, which was very young and, and I didn't know much about money, um, didn't know much about budgeting. And I recommend everyone out there, you know, really learn your budget. You know, don't just say that you have enough to get by each month. You should know down to almost almost a dollar amount very close how much you spend per month and how much you make per month and if you're in a, a deficit meaning you owe more money at the end of the month than you make or if you're in a surplus meaning you make more money than you owe and once you do that you become enlightened to another level of independence in life and that's a very important part uh, of your journey tony if you decide to go that route, a small teardrop like Texas uh, Rusty has might be a good option. Thank you, Tony. If I go the route of a small travel trailer, it would probably be the A-Liner Great Escape ST Edition uh, that has the fully self-contained bathroom and it's about 1,600 pounds dry. The Casita travel trailer is a little bit too heavy to tow with the Jeep Renegade because the biggest part about a travel trailer is a travel trailer, I think, is good in regards to cost effectiveness. Meaning, you could spend for a brand new travel trailer anywhere between 10 to 20,000 max, and you could get a home. You can get it's a tiny home on wheels, it's perfect. And you eliminate some of the burdens, some of the worst parts about living in a car that I deal with, which are lack of climate control, uh, which are a uh, lack of conveniences. I'm not self-contained. I don't have a shower. I don't have a bathroom. I don't have a kitchen. You can eliminate those worst parts about car van dwelling, but you have to do it where you play out, not just how much is the trailer. Can I tow the trailer with my current vehicle or do I have to get another vehicle? And then you have to look at the logistics of where you're going to tow it, the campgrounds you're going to stay, and are you going to do like a thousand kilt? trails camping pass are you going to do private campgrounds etc you have to really play that out savat great to see you brother shout out to you all my truck drivers where are you at today savat you traveling or you got a day off man love to you brother good morning man yes yeah, savat i uh, just had my starbucks i got through a rough night last night uh you're at home brother god bless you man and uh but i got through get through the tough nights well i tell people out there whatever life you're living because you know, it doesn't really matter in one sense you live in a car, van, or, or uh, 18 wheeler, and you're a truck driver. You could have good and bad nights. And last night was a bad night for me. Um, a couple reasons, you know, the, the climate one, and just uh, too close to family. Sometimes I feel like I'm ready to be back on my own. Um, so it, it's a mixed bag of that, you know, it really is. I'm an independent soul. Um, and I'm not in the environment which I thrive. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm an adaptable person. I'll never forget when I had sold my house, uh, I was still working at an office and the manager found out he was very cool about it. And he said, Sam, well, I don't know what you're how you're going to play it out. He goes, but one thing I know is that you have an adaptable mind. So, and I thought, I thought it was a great compliment and I was very thankful and it was encouraging. 
To, and that's why I always tell you guys, number one book I recommend to you is Who Moved My Cheese? It's about adapting because life always changes. And life changed for all of us this year with the coronavirus and a lot of different obstacles. Now, hopefully, we've gotten past the worst of it. Hopefully, you know, just like, you know, you get the height of the summer, hopefully we've gotten to the height of the pandemic and hopefully it dissipates, uh, whether they get a vaccine or whatever, or, and uh, slowly but surely things go back to somewhat normal. Will they ever go back to normal? Will we, will we be wearing masks a year from now? I don't know. We may be wearing masks a year from now, but I mean, I, I would think gradually, because if you think about it, if the 1918 pandemic kill, you know, whatever they say, 50,000 or 100,000, um, uh, 50 million or 100 million people. If it was that harsh, and it was that harsh because we didn't have hospitals like we do today. We didn't have science, technology. You know, we didn't have infrastructure, running water to the level. You know, so the, the reason there was so many dead was not just the pandemic. It was the lack of infrastructure. We, we weren't really a developed country in the 1918 in America. So if we got over that, that's encouraging to anyone out there listening is that, look, we're going to get over the coronavirus. I mean, God willing, no one knows the future, so I don't want to give you false hope. But I would think eventually, you know, one way or another, society goes more back to normal, whether it goes 100% back, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Tony says, good morning to Savat. Thank you, Tony. Shout out to Tony Savat and Infinity 1999. I appreciate you guys. I hope you're enjoying. I'm just sharing this morning. Again, I may go live later, but I just wanted to share this morning. And I'm going to share some more um, uh, because, like I say, I have, I have bad moments of living in my car. Uh, but what gives me peace, guys, it gives me great peace is when I wake up and I'm not committed to anything. That gives me great joy. Uh, when I don't owe anyone anything, that gives me great, great joy. And it still makes more pros than cons. It's still better for me in my age and my condition to live in my car than... I live in an apartment or house. I mean, I've gotten people uh, send me messages at times like, Sam, it's crazy. You can live cheaper renting a, a small room and have all the conveniences. Yeah, it's true, but you won't have the independence. You'll have roommates, you'll have a landlord, and I don't want that. Um, again, to me, the home base may be the eventual future, but it's going to have to be the right deal. And I'm going to have to have enough time to process it, to think about it. Uh, because to me... I don't want to go backwards in life, you know. I don't want to go back to the stress levels I had when I was younger, and I don't think I will, but I want to be very focused, urgent, and have a sober mind in what home ownership uh, means, uh, not just how it feels initially. It's a stress inducer to a certain level. It's an obligation, long-term commitment. It's maintenance. It's liability. Those are all words I hate. So I have to kind of talk it out sometimes in my mind, like, Sam, you hate long-term commitment. You hate maintenance. You hate liability. Why would you do something that that is the parameters of? And I say to myself, damn, you're right. And then I go back to where I'm at now, which is sitting in my car doing a live feed about the best and the worst carts about living in your car. Now, certainly in the beginning, there was shame. Okay, there's shame. That may be one of the worst parts about living in your car. Initially, there's shame. Uh, but some of it is self-induced. Uh, it's set, you're self-conscious of it because uh, you're, you're scared. You don't know if it'll last. Uh, I do have a little bit of I don't give a F attitude, and that helps me in life uh, because you almost need that attitude in life. No matter what you're going to do, live in a car or, or you know, be an artist or be a truck driver, you, know, you almost have to have I don't give a fuck what other people think attitude to a certain level okay? or else you don't do anything in life because I've certainly met people that troll me uh, or that I've met in real life that because they're so unhappy with their life, they kind of project their fears, their insecurities, their expectations on you. And then that makes you feel bad or whatever. But it's, it's, a, it's a psychological game. It's like people who go to a psychiatrist, not because they want to get better. They want to see if they can outsmart them. And more boundaries. How do you deal with a manipulator? More boundaries. I tell you right now, members only chats have been a blessing to me. Improve me. I tell you right now, changing my phone number in real life with real relations has been a blessing to me. There's no greater way to deal with the difficult people in your life than to increase boundaries. 
And you'll have to figure that out. But for your best life, no matter what walk of life, there's no way you can do it with negative people in it. Uh, or with people that just don't vibe with you, don't see your vision, don't share your vision, okay? Uh, in your personal life for your personal goals. In, 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 in the company environment, in your job, uh, if you're a leader in, in an organization, there's a team mentality that has to be considered because you are an organization, okay, in some form. Whether you're, you're uh, you know, again, a uh, trucking company, a corporate company, uh, uh, mayor of a city, you're an organization. You have to think of way other perspectives. Okay? As your individual, for your individual life, your individual goals, it's, it's, a, it's a tunnel vision. Okay? It's, a, it's a focus that no one can tell you what you need to do for your life like you. Okay? People will give you advice. People share their life lessons okay? like I do. But ultimately, you have to grab the best of what everyone tells you, uh, you ha and you have to analyze the worst. What, how can this, you know, what are the worst parts about this? Am I willing to deal with a total loss? What's my exit strategy? And then you have to, you know, sometimes make the best of a bad situation, okay? But I, I do think that the less is more mentality helps you more than hurts you. I don't think... If you go on a journey to simplify your life, throw out things, downsize, sell your house, maybe live in your car, maybe not, but just a, a downsizing life, I don't think that hurts you. Okay. I, I think what hurts you is too much. Okay, Too many obligations, too many bills, too much stuff to take care of. And so when I go through my bad days, my worst days, I think about that. Because the human urge is to let me make myself better by doing something about it. Uh, but a mature person kind of realizes there's nothing I can do to solve some bad parts about life. The best way I could solve it is not having a lot to take care of so I can take care of more of myself today. Self-care Sunday, laundry, shave. That's what I did today. That's what I did this morning. And I feel good. I mean, I feel better than I did last night. Last night was tough. The best part is you wake up and you're a free bird. Uh, the worst part is some nights when it's hard to have that sanctuary of a home. Okay. Uh, the biggest payoff of, of, of a home okay, is your sanctuary. Uh, if you have a home that's peaceful in a peaceful area with peaceful neighbors and peaceful people within the home. And many people don't have that. Very hard to have that. So I don't know. Let's take a hydration break. Thank you again, Infinity. Shout out to Tony and Sabat. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'll go for... Um, I'm going to go for a long walk uh, in about an hour. I'm going to try to do some uh, outdoor activities to exercise uh, and then go from there. So Self-care Sunday, yo, yeah. I'm going to ride my bicycle. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, for 20 miles. I'm, I'm thinking about that's my next step today. Uh, he's going to ride his bicycle for 20 miles waiting on a buddy to stop by. Well, love to you, Savat. I like your mindset. Me and you on the same page. Exercise is good for you physically and mentally. Get your blood, uh, get your blood flowing through your body. Uh, get your endorphins going, get your creativity going, your juices flowing, sweat. Sweat releases toxins. But you have to do some things you don't want to do. Laundry, shaving, uh, those are good things to do in the morning. You know, the maximum productivity in life, they say the human's most productive hours in the day are 8 a.m. to noon. So try to do the things you, you know you don't want to do, but you have to do between 8 a.m. to noon. And then by noon, just do things you want to do exercise, uh, hang out with your friends, uh, you know, go, go for, a, you know, again, a swim, a bike, whatever. But I, I'm on a similar journey today. Uh, right now it's about, uh, it's early still, it's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I got done what I need to get done early. Uh, I'm going to go for a long walk. 
I'm going to go for uh, a dip in the Atlantic Ocean. See, that's the other thing. The best part about living in your car is I live by the ocean. Okay. Every day, I swim in the Atlantic Ocean. I don't have a beach house. Okay. I don't have uh, flood insurance, hurricane insurance, and all property taxes. I don't have utility bills. I have a beach house on wheels, and that's a blessing. That's the best part. Uh, so that, even in the truck, I walk for an hour, smart man, at least every night. You're very smart. Sometimes in the morning, it helps me a lot. It's the, it's a saving grace. Walking saved my life. Shout out to you, Savat. Walking saved my life. Walking saved my life. Losing 200 pounds, walking was a key part. I didn't join a gym. Just walked and changed my diet. If you change your diet and you walk about every hour or so, you change your life. 15-minute walk about every hour. They say when you sit for more than 45 minutes, your body physically and mentally begins to deteriorate. Why? Because when you walk, blood circulates through your body. What does that do? When blood circulates through your body, it delivers nutrients and oxygen to your body, to your cells. And so when you sit, your blood doesn't flow as much. You don't get the nutrients and oxygen that your body needs, your cells need. So movement is part of the human need for quality of well-being physically and mentally. Movement. Okay, and not just driving. I mean, getting out of your car and walking like you're saying. And that's my next step today in managing of my time is that I will go for a long walk. I'll do some exercises probably in a public park. Uh, still struggling a little bit with the gym closures in New Jersey. Uh, that's been a disaster. And that's been affecting me too mentally. That's why I re that's one part I'm looking forward to in Florida is working out again. So, but keeping my eating habits good, staying active, um, and just getting through the bad days uh, encourages me. Uh, and I think, look, we're, we're getting to the height of the summer. Things will get better with the coronavirus. And uh, I think better days are ahead. Uh, at least that's my hope. And uh, that's how I feel. And that's it. That's the morning uh, live feed. Uh, I'll, I may go live again later on today. We'll see. Uh, but like I say, it was Sunday, so I just figured I'd freestyle it. Thank you. Uh, Tony for joining. Thank you, Savat. Thank you, Infinity1999. Blessed to you also, brother, and I appreciate you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Do some things you don't want to do. Uh, take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. Keep pushing forward. Keep showing up. And uh, remember, uh, to you're going to have good and bad days. Uh, there's the best and the worst. So don't when you're going through a bad moment, don't just give in to the urge to correct it per se. Because sometimes when we correct something that's bad, we overcompensate and we overcommit. Slow down, okay? Uh, look long-term goals. Uh, and sometimes you just got to bite your tongue as far as, you know, look, it's a tough moment. You got to just fight through it, stay the course, and eventually it gets better and you'll feel better if you don't overcompensate for it. All right? Peace and love to you guys. Stay positive. Thank you to all my members. Thank you, Infinity. Love to you guys. I'll talk to you later.